Welcome back to Psychology of Peace Building. I had promised I would also talk a little bit more about toxic systems and some of the, how the tools are empowering you to walk away, to try to change and transform. Uh, you're getting introduced to a lot of processes and skills, so I hope you're not feeling overwhelmed, but this is pretty important to review. Now, in uh, Holding These Truths, your workbook where you're working with actual real world case studies, you started with an abusive juvenile treatment center, you went into a corrupt church, and then the third case study was racist, sexist, homophobic, you know, all the isms you want to throw out there. A very troubled, toxic community. And that's where I introduce you to assessment of toxic systems. Now, if you remember, a system is a more complex, ongoing relationship. It can be your family system, it can be your marriage system, it can be a cultural system, a group. It certainly can be a workplace, an organizational system, a school system like Dominguez Hills, and it can be a community system. So it's where we're going up, you know, it includes the lower levels, our inner world, our personal relationships, and then the group level. Uh, what goes on within our groups and what goes on between groups. It includes all those levels. It includes all that complexity. Some of the variables that you can use to assess whether you're in a toxic, and that's an unhealthy system that encourages, promotes destructive, escalating violent conflict. Sadly, you know, the CSU has been embroiled in a scandal involving uh, multiple campuses and sexual assault, sexual harassment. That's a toxic system. And hopefully our new leadership is going to take seriously the job of healing and transformation. But in the meantime, you're being empowered with some tools to take care of yourself, right? First of all, you need to gather information and ask, is this an unhealthy place? Now, anytime you see bullying, you experience bullying, you experience disinterest in ways you're being harmed, uh, those are red flags. And your material is introducing you to some of the red flags. Uh, neglect is a red flag along with abuse. But some of the key variables are how people communicate. Is there a caste system? You know, the caste system originated technically in the Hindu society, but most of our cultures have caste systems. It's our class system, right? The wealthiest, the most privileged, or the most powerful are on top, and the rest of us are at a lower lower levels. Uh, that's a toxic, unhealthy system. A vibrant, healthy democracy does not allow that kind of uh, distance between people, discrepancy, neglect of human need. And obviously, we're still working on this in the world. There's only a few cultures, and they're the very expensive countries with very high taxes, uh, Norway, where my family, my grandmother was born, uh, is one of those countries. People pay a lot of their wealth towards the society so that everyone's needs are taken care of. And even those cultures are struggling. You know, Sweden has uh, accepted uh, war immigrants, refugees from war, from all the major wars that have been happening in my lifetime, the Afghan, the Iraq, you know, the Syrian, uh, now Ukrainian, Russia. And so they're becoming more and more ethnically diverse uh, and they don't know how to handle that with responding to everyone's need. Now the United States has been a relatively open and welcoming country 
um, until recent years when we've become more polarized where there's such a rise in hatred and closed-minded thinking. Um, so where do we find a healthy non-toxic system? If you ever start your own business, maybe you can create a healthy non-toxic system. I am trying my best with my own marriage and my own family, but really there are days and there are degrees, right? Uh, but I think you're getting the general message. If someone is trying to dominate and control you, think of the extreme, you know, Chinese and Russian societies, that's a highly toxic, abusive culture. Um, so it's, it's not subtle. But so many human beings uh, have the cognitive distortion of denial that they don't, they're not capable of recognizing the red flags. That explains school violence. I have been working with school violence my whole adult life. And the majority of human beings who take on administrative roles want to put on a happy face, a beautiful appearance. They want to attract more people to their school and in doing that, they have been ignoring and attempting to bury, deny the red flag warnings around bullying uh, and other abusive treatment in the school. That's a toxic system. Okay, um, I want to give you some hope in this lecture, not just talk about how many toxic systems there are in the world today and how much transformation is needed. Before I talk, revisit the, the OMSBUDS uh, role with cleaning up these ugly, unhealthy system. Let me talk again about the best alternative to a negotiated agreement that was introduced to you early on in our course. Your best alternative, your best option. Most of us uh, have had to figure this out as to survive in our lives, right? We've had to look at the people around us and determine where it's safest for us, how we're going to survive, how we're going to create safety. That's a best alternative. And I have walked away from many toxic systems. I've also been a whistleblower with various toxic systems. Um, other times, I try to do more work within. I accept people with their imperfection because you do a cost-risk-benefit analysis, right? You, want, you weigh the positives and the negatives, and you figure out your best alternative. That's key. We all need to have the empowered strength to walk away to protect ourselves and take care of ourselves. But we do have other alternatives as well. So let me go to my PowerPoint and quickly review and elaborate on the OMSBUDS contribution. Um, as a change agent, some of you are going to be change agents like me, taking on these toxic systems. So let's look at the OMSBUDS. Um, the OMSBUDS was created by Sweden years ago. And you know, these are all societies that had royalty, that had kings and queens. Some of them still do. But they wanted an independent truth teller, truth finder, who could expose corruption, deceit, fraud, and abuse of power. So they created this position. Um, there are two types. One is an investigative onspuds, and they will expose and publicize like journalists, you know, when somebody is doing something wrong. And then there are also organizational onspuds who work within organizations. The CSU has a couple. We've been hoping that Dominguez would have a, a student onspuds, a faculty onspuds, a staff onspuds. Still, that has not happened, but, but there are campuses that do have ombuds, and they will try to mediate conflict, 
you know, talk to everybody concerned, gather information, look for positive uh, common ground and alternatives and help that organization clean up its act. Everything they do is what you're being introduced to in this course. And if you're really enjoying the course, you might want to check out, you know, becoming an ombuds. Why not? We need a lot of them right now. We have citizen oversight commissions who will investigate police abuse of power and citizen complaint. Uh, the ombuds is another form of this. Uh, we need, you know, more and more whistleblowers, investigators, and truth tellers uh, to really tackle all the challenges that we face. They will conduct uh, assessments. They will gather information. They must coach leadership because leadership, there's a, it's very rare that you find leadership who has actually trained to be a leader and to be a democratic, facilitative, ethical leader. You know, basically they, they do a competitive hiring process, they get hired and they've got all these different forces asking uh, that they do different things. And uh, this can be a part of educating them how to do uh, psychology of peace building. We, they advocate if they are ethical and effective for processes that put people first. Yeah, I'm just giving you a little bit of elaboration of what they do on a daily basis. You, you don't actually need to know this for psychology of peace building. What matters most is that you understand that these roles and people exist. Now, sadly, uh, they'll educate the members of an organization, a community, in collaborative win-win conflict resolution. These, are, yeah, they, there's a lot of things that they can do. Um, what we see right now in the world today is probably the most toxic uh, cultures and systems that I have seen in a lifetime pretty much everywhere. So I, I want you to feel good that this course and your reading, your activities have empowered you to take care of yourself and keep yourself safe unconditionally. But you have to practice these tools. You have to use these processes. Um, hopefully this helps.